Thank you for allowing me to talk about such an important subject. You know, for myself as a family medicine provider, I constantly stress the importance of learning CPR. Uh, it's very accessible. In fact, I have a partnership with the American Heart Association where we have these kiosks where you can learn CPR at airports across the U.S. Invest the time because you could truly save a life like we witnessed on the field last night. So, Mike, from your perspective, what happened? We obviously we, we watched. We saw DeMar, uh, you know, take the hit, stand up briefly before looking unconscious and, and then uh, them performing CPR for for near 10 minutes. From your perspective, knowing uh, you know what may have happened, what, what were your takeaways, Mike, from watching Demar go down the way he did? The most important caveat to say here is we don't know with a hundred percent certainty what happened because we are not Demar's personal physicians. Sure. We're not looking at his scans, his blood work. We don't know his history. But one of the most important factors, being a doctor who's worked on the sidelines of football games in the past, is the mechanism of injury. In fact, sometimes the mechanism of how the injury has happened provides us more information as doctors than actually doing the physical exam in a given moment. So in this case, what we witnessed was DeMar do it, perform a tackle, take a hit to the center of the chest, to the center of the cardiac region, and then stand up and immediately take a fall with medical personnel finding him pulseless in that moment. What is the highest likelihood to have happened is a condition known as commotio cordis. This is a Latin term for a trauma that happens to the heart wall, but it happens during a very specific millisecond of a moment when the heart rhythm is doing uh, something known as repolarizing. And if you get the hit in that exact moment, it could send the heart into an unstable rhythm basically an arrhythmia, which then leaves the person pulseless without vital blood reaching organs, most notably the brain. Therefore, the person is unconscious, they are pulseless, and they need immediate chest compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions in order to not save their life, but to bring them back to life. Because a person who is pulseless is not a person that is considered alive. So, so obviously, Mike, and I, I think it's easy to connect the dots here, had there not been intervention last night, then... Damar Hamlin would uh, would not be in a hospital right now fighting for his life. He, of course. he would not have a life. Yeah, uh, if this is truly the condition that I'm suspecting it is, commotio cordis, um, and he was truly pulseless, without intervention, this is a lethal condition. Um, the fact that first uh, aid was given, uh, given appropriately by medical personnel, they started chest compressions, there was a defibrillator on the scene, which allows the heart to be shocked if it's in an appropriate rhythm to be shocked back into the correct rhythm to bring back the pulse. Based on the reports we're hearing now, the pulse was returned yeah. after about 10 minutes, which I will say is a concerning amount of time because we can start seeing brain injury after only three, four minutes of time. However, we have to keep in mind that DeMar is a young man. He's a fit man, a very strong man who has a lot of reserve. So we're hopeful that despite having this time without circulations uh, supplying oxygen to his brain and his body, he had the capacity to withstand that stress and hopefully he recovers well in the ICU. You know, obviously hoping that the brain wasn't affected, Mike. It, is it possible, do you see a path for him to ever get back and play football again, contact football? Or is that something that's just uh, too dangerous at this point for him going it's forward? It's true. It's truly uh, a lot of speculation would be made by right. making a statement on this because, again, uh, we're even doing a little bit of speculation in believing that this right. is the condition that happened. Right. Um, we need to get more information from his ICU stay. This doesn't happen over a period of hours. This happens over a period of days, sometimes weeks, because the goal of an ICU stay after you have return of spontaneous circulation, once you get those pulses back, you need to make sure that the blood pressure is well controlled. The person is breathing on a ventilator uh, to make sure the temperature is managed effectively, because there's a lot of things that the body does cr creates an inflammatory state. Uh, all those things need to be well controlled in order to help that person return back to their healthy state. This will take time. We need to be patient and we need to most importantly support uh, the team, the family and everyone involved in the situation, because this is a traumatic event to have gone through for everyone involved and players included.
I'll get you out of here on this one, Mike. It sounds like at least reading stuff on social media, I think a lot of people thought once you heard that his pulse had been restored, that that DeMar Hamlin was out of the woods. But it, it seems very clear to me now that this is still a, an uphill battle and there's still you know work left to be done for him to get out of this and come out of it healthy like we all want to see him. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we, we want to see him back on his feet. We want to see him successful uh, and healthy. But this will take work. This will take time. Uh, there will be a de determination made in the ICU of how long that process can take. Uh, and we wish him the speediest recovery. Mike, thank you so much uh, for sharing the uh, the insight. I know a lot of people, we we don't understand these things. And you're, you're so curious to know what's happening. And uh, this, was, uh, this was so helpful. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Look, this is the reason why we, like I said, we need to teach everyone CPR. And this is also why we have these defibrillators at all sporting events. Because this doesn't just happen in football. It actually happens more commonly in Little League Baseball, lacrosse, hockey, where a projectile can hit the chest. So we, we really need to think health first. Uh, even when we're thinking about our athletes as well.